Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Or if this is your first time here, hi, I'm Nia Dragon and I'm a multidisciplinary artist who loves creating cute and whimsical pieces. Today I'm filming a draw with me video. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these, so I'm looking forward to settling in and getting creative with you guys. I'll be working on finishing a pet portrait of our cat Foofy using my iPad and Procreate. As I work on the painting, feel free to grab some art supplies and follow along if you feel inspired. I'll also be chatting a bit about my career and my dive into working in television animation. I've had some apprehension about candidly discussing my experiences in the industry up until now. A concern of mine was potentially dismantling this fairy tale dream job for young artists, but with all that's going on in entertainment nowadays, I think there's no better time to really be open about the state of affairs and talking about the good and the unexpected. So I'll start at the very beginning. I went to school for animation and despite the naysayers of art school, I had a fantastic experience. I attended two different colleges. First was the Delaware College of Art and Design where I felt like I built a very strong foundation in art and animation. DCAD is actually a transfer school and initially I had only intended on getting my associates, but through a lot of persuasion, I very reluctantly decided to transfer. I transferred to the University of the Arts where I really grew into the filmmaker and multidisciplinary artist I am today. I do feel like both schools gave me the skills and confidence to pursue my dreams after graduation. Speaking of which, I was pretty lucky in hindsight. I realize now it's not entirely common to break into animation in the timeline that I did. I freelanced right out of college for about six months, mostly doing animation work for various studios until I got my first big break at a production studio. Looking back, I was really fortunate to break into animation as quickly as I did after graduating. I freelanced for about six months, mostly doing animation work, before getting my first big studio job. At the time, I thought six months was an eternity to wait and had started to give up hope on my animation dreams. I even scheduled an interview for Kohl's since it just was such a bleak job hunt. But as soon as I did that, I feel like my luck changed for the better. Bento Box reached out for an interview and I had applied there several times that year and had even done tests. So I was aware I was in their pipeline in some capacity. Out of the blue, they wanted to chat about a potential role and yeah, of course I accepted. And I was just really excited to get the time of day from a producer. My Kohl's interview was Monday and my interview with Bento was the Thursday before. By the morning of my original Kohl's interview, I had an offer about being a compositor. So obviously I canceled that interview with Kohl's and I was onboarding with Bento that week. The timing was unbelievable to me. Just as I considered changing course, like that opportunity really came barreling towards me. And so that is how I got my start into the industry working on Wolf Boy and the Everything Factory. I was hired as a contractor and I worked from home in my childhood bedroom for a couple months before making the leap and moving to Atlanta. Moving to Atlanta was a pretty crazy thing to do. When I moved here, I was still a contractor and that meant I had an approaching end date. My contract was set to expire in June of 2021 and I moved in January 2021. When I initially moved, I was pretty concerned about my end date because that was literally only six months and I signed a year lease and I just wanted to be sure that I would find work after Wolf Boy and the Everything Factory had finished up. But it wasn't too long after I moved that they decided to hire me full time, so it ended up working out, but I didn't know that going into my move. I was just crossing my fingers and hoping that they would hire me full time. So after my end date, there's pretty much no guarantee of work. In animation, you can be hired full time with benefits, but when the project ends, that's pretty much it. That's all you got, unless they're interested in putting you on another show which I was lucky enough to have that happen to me time and time again for almost two years. And after almost two years of consistent work, I was finally laid off. By this point, I was pretty burnt out, so I enjoyed my unemployment just for a brief period though. I was pretty soon hired by an ad agency, which was a complete departure for me. 
I wasn't sure if I would like it, but it ended up being one of my most positive job experiences. The culture was refreshingly different from TV animation for me. Ironically, I had dismissed motion design suggestions in college and had been pretty fixated on only doing television animation, but this motion design role had such a relaxed pace and my specific responsibilities didn't feel as intensive, and I really enjoyed that. There is a crunch culture and an urgency to everything in television animation, and I just really enjoyed the, the vibe of that agency. But unfortunately, all good things eventually come to an end. I was affected by mass layoffs, which stung more because I had hoped to grow there. However, it did lead to an amazing career highlight. Completely by coincidence, a friend from my previous job reached out needing help on a project. He was working at a different animation studio and asked if I was available just as I found out I had been laid off. So literally on the same day I was let go, I signed paperwork with a new studio and by the end of the week, I was already working back in television animation, which that is sincerely one of the craziest stories. It's even crazier than like my break into animation. I owe so much to this friend. He was actually even the one who gave me my first big break in animation. And if he hadn't pulled me back into TV after that layoff, I would have never had the chance to be a lead on Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I was recently the lead compositor on the latest season of Aqua Teen Hunger Force which was such a huge accomplishment and career milestone for me. It was really surreal contributing to this iconic show that I grew up watching and I likely wouldn't have had that once in a lifetime opportunity if not for his outreach. I'm so grateful for his mentorship and he's really taught me everything I know about making cartoons look cool. And that all kind of brings me to where I'm at today. It's certainly been quite the wild ride over these last three and a half years working in animation between TV and advertising, and I've learned so much during my time navigating this industry so far. Here's a couple things I've learned along the way. Jobs come and go. You'll likely work for multiple studios a year because job security is not really guaranteed. Sometimes you can get lucky and work uninterrupted for two years, five years, ten years, but a lot of times in animation it is piecing together contracts year by year to hopefully make up a full year of work. To kind of make up for that though, it's really important to nurture your professional relationships. The animation industry thrives on connections and networking and the people you meet along the way are so important. And of course, I don't mean this in a opportunistic way. Just be friendly to your coworkers. Be someone pleasant to work with. Be someone who is kind and considerate. And of course, your name will come up should there be the right role. You may often not be working on your dream project and if you look at my career versus the work that I make in my free time, I'm sure you'll notice there is a gap between what I enjoy doing and what I work on professionally. I've built a lot of my career working in adult animation, which is not exactly where I hoped to land, but it has been where I am. But I think that's okay. Every job is just a chance to learn new skills and expand your abilities. Even projects that don't excite you can further your career and sharpen in your skill set. And of course, when that perfect opportunity comes along to work on that cool show you've been waiting for for your entire career, you'll have sharpened your tools working on all of these other shows. The animation industry is quite corporate at the end of the day. As a kid, I pictured it being a community of artsy, creative people, and to some extent, it still is. But in many ways, it operates like a typical office job. You'll deal with realities like crunch time, unreasonable clients and collaborating with teams on tight deadlines. And truthfully, sometimes upper management has unreasonable expectations due to lack of pipeline knowledge. I used to assume executives would understand the production process, but that really varies from studio to studio. Budget factors also come into play in terms of getting sufficient resources and support, especially during high stress crunch periods. So if you're considering animation as an escape from a traditional office job, weigh that decision carefully. There 
are absolutely magical elements in getting to bring creative projects to life, but once it becomes professional work, there are still kind of realities like tight deadlines and crunch to be aware of, and the passion can get lost sometimes. And I don't want to discourage you from pursuing this career, but I do want to paint a truthful picture. Animation takes immense dedication and perseverance, especially when you're working on a project that may not be aligned to what your creative values are. And so I'm saying all this so that hopefully you can go in with eyes wide open about the effort required. So with all of that said now, if you pursue a creative career, be sure to maintain some sort of personal creative outlet outside of work and don't look to your career for artistic fulfillment alone. Many people think that if you turn your passion into a career, you'll never work another day in your life. But in reality, any art form can start to feel like work once it becomes your nine to five. Animation is not different. To avoid creative burnout, devote time making art just for you. I've explored mediums totally unrelated to animation, and I really recommend exploring non-digital hobbies if you stare at a screen all day. Give your eyes and mind a break. Early on in my career, I used to work really long hours and then after hours, a way for me to kind of decompress was either, you know, scrolling on my phone or drawing something on my iPad or playing video games, which these are all fine hobbies to have. I don't know if scrolling is really a hobby, but you know what I'm saying here. Because of the amount of screen time that I had, I was developing migraines and my eyes were really dry and I used to have eye drops sitting on my desk. And once I started to switch up my hobbies and not spend so much time in front of a screen after work, I noticed that kind of went away. So that's why I advocate, you know, trying a non-screen hobby if you can. Lastly, and this is probably the most piping hot tea that I'll share today, resilience is key to making it in animation. I know for a lot of folks observing my career and other professionals like me, you're only really seeing the tip of the iceberg. I've experienced so many false starts and rejections along the way. And there have been more than a few pivotal moments that fell through just as I thought I was finally going to live out what I thought was my dream role. It's TV animation is a really competitive industry where you have to hope to be chosen, which honestly can really mess with your head. At one point, I derived too much self-worth from my career success. Being passed over for roles I felt qualified for was honestly soul crushing. <laughs> for example, I vividly remember doing a character design test for a huge studio and being promised feedback only to be completely ghosted. In my experience, and this is just full transparency here, the fast paced of animation means hopefuls are not always treated with care. With so much silence and rejection, it is really hard for many aspiring artists to stay the course. I mean, I was about to be a retail associate at Kohl's because I got crickets for six plus months. Now that I've seen what goes on internally though, I understand the disconnect between recruitment and applicants and it's frustrating. That's why I believe it's crucial to separate your self-worth from whether gatekeepers give you a chance or not. This is easier said than done, I know, but you have to remember this industry is impersonal. Lack of feedback is often a reflection of hectic schedules and not your talent. Focus instead on refining your skills and being ready for the next opportunity whether here or one that you create on your own terms. Focus on your controllables, like honing your skills and developing your personal practice. I know for many, the dream is making it in animation at a big studio and working on a beloved show. And that's an amazing accomplishment to strive for, but it's not the only path to doing meaningful work. Have you seen the world of indie animation lately? It's incredible. There's so much power in creating independently and telling your stories no matter who says no. Sure, getting a coveted studio job validates your skills in a traditional sense, but at the end of the day, animation is about bringing ideas to life through your unique lens. And thanks to technology, that's increasingly possible without formal gatekeepers. If the studio route doesn't work out, don't lose hope. Focus on improving your craft and getting your visions out into the world however you can. Build an audience that appreciates your signature style, and yeah, the definition of professional success is changing. In saying all this, I do want to be clear, I have 
immense gratitude for the studios I've worked with. Being a part of shows that stream on major platforms like Netflix, Apple TV, and Adult Swim is a privilege and an accomplishment I don't take for granted. My aim is not to undermine studios, but to empower those with dreams of animation to stay resilient. So yeah, that's about it. I just wanted to share some of my personal thoughts and stories on working in animation, even though opening up is not always easy. Obviously, everything that I talked about today is a bit more general. Every show is different and unique with its challenges, but these are some observations that I feel are consistent through all of my professional experiences. I think it's valuable to have honest conversations about experiences in the industry because there isn't a lot of transparent information online. And honestly, it wasn't so long ago that I was searching for people's authentic stories about their careers in animation. So by being open about my own path, hopefully I can help others get a realistic preview of what this field is like. If you'd ever be interested in a more specific Q&A video though, I'd be happy to do so and you can leave any questions you may have for me down below. And yeah, that's all for this video. I hope this was insightful and until next time, bye guys!